welcome to the Glitter and Sage podcast. I am your host, Melissa. This is episode three, which features an interview with world percussionist Arjun Brugman, who you may know from playing the tabla with Grammy-nominated kirtan artist Krishna Das. And so this interview we recorded about a year and a half ago when I was living and working at Omega, which is a holistic studies retreat center in upstate New York. And Arjun was there with Krishna Das playing at a workshop called Ecstatic Chant, which was just such a beautiful weekend full of kirtan music and chanting. And it was still one of the highlights of the six months I spent at Omega. So it was really cool to meet Arjun and to record this interview with him there. Um, in this episode, Arjun explains kirtan music and talks about music as devotion and drumming as meditation. Arjun and I both have strong connections with our animals. If you're watching this episode on YouTube, you'll see Sage sleeping in the background on the bed over there. And so Arjun has the sweetest little dog named Muji. And Muji sits on his lap while he's on stage playing the tabla. And it's the most incredible thing I've ever seen. And so this interview, Muji is there with us as well. And we're playing with him, like throwing his little bunny toy around. And he's hanging out on Arjun's lap for a while. But in this episode, Arjun shares with us the story of how Muji came into his life. He also talks about traveling the world with Krishna Das and about his guru, Siddhi Ma, and the time he spent with her in India. And also at the end of this episode, Arjun plays the Bendir frame drum for us, so that was really awesome. And he shares a lot about some of his improvisational music and his records, Dreaming Spirits and Otherworld. And so since we recorded this episode a little while ago, I've caught up with him and he shared his update that he will be releasing some new recordings soon of Acoustic World Percussion and also a series of electronic art pieces. So I'm looking forward to seeing those when they come out. And also right now, he is giving virtual percussion lessons. So if you are interested in learning how to play the tabla, the djembe, or the frame drum, you can reach out to Arjun on his website. And I'll have the link for that in the show notes. And this was just a really cool episode to record because one of my intentions with starting this podcast was to really connect with people. And so this episode, this interview was really the beginning of Arjun and I's friendship and we became great friends after this. And I'm sure he'll be someone who comes on the podcast again in the future because he just has so much wisdom and beautiful experiences to share. I would love to talk more with him on that. And yeah, it was just really cool to then after we recorded this, I went to see him play with Krishna Das in Northampton and they also played in the city. So grateful for this podcast being a way of connecting with people and then sharing those connections with our listeners. So thank you for tuning in and we will meditate into the interview with Arjun's song Awake, which is from his Otherworld album. So we can go right into the episode listening to his beautiful drumming. So enjoy. I am 
here with Arjun Brugman and his little dog, Muji. Hello. <laughs> um, Arjun is a world percussionist, drummer, composer, and recording artist who is currently touring worldwide playing tabla with Krishna Das, and Muji is currently touring occupying the role of sitting on your lap while you play. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Krishna Das was just here for ecstatic chant this past weekend for three days plus a special Labor Day plus a special workshop mm -hmm. so like five days total yeah, which was so awesome days. to have here and um, yeah so that was really nice to have here on campus mm -hmm. and I got to volunteer at Sight of his fan so when I wasn't working I could pop in and out. Um, and so for those who don't already know Krishna Das's music, um, it is Kirtan music. Kirtan, yeah. yeah, do you want to explain Kirtan? Does anyone yeah. Point that now? yeah, so Kirtan is a devotional um, practice from India, and it involves music. Usually uh, the harmonium is played, and the singer plays harmonia, and uh, usually accompanied by Murdangam, Tabla, or Dolak, which is a, more of a, a mountain folk drum, and cartels, or bells, Manjira, actually they're called. Um, and uh, Muji's going to be making strange noises in the back. Muji's <laughs> stuffing, okay? Um, and uh, so, so the practice is chanting the names of God. They're, they're mantras, but they're... they're not mantras that really do something, you know, you're not going to stop a train with the name of God, you know, or, or do something, you know, get some money with a mantra or open up a certain chakra or something like that. It's the names of God is just to be in the presence of love, which is, um, you know, our own true mm -hmm. being, inner being. So the, the practice is usually call and response or you know, or just sitting two people or three people, whatever, and going in a circle and you know, each musician singing around mm -hmm. like the mantra. Uh, the way we do it is call and response. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the singer, Krishadas, or whoever calls, this is, does the mantra, and then everyone responds back. So, yeah. And it's, the essence of the practice is basically to pay attention to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And to, I mean, you can sing with devotion or, you know, try to, like, that's just trying, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the purpose is just to pay attention and to be completely in a moment doing it and surrendering to what you're doing. And then that's when the name of the mantra is really going to work. Right? Um, yeah, and... Uh, being someone who's just starting to get into falling in love with kirtan, yeah. like I don't know what every chant means necessarily, yeah, yeah, like yeah. the translation. Um, I have gone to somewhere they explain it, and I yeah. do like to know that, yeah. but I feel like it's more of a feeling, and yeah. you don't really need to know. It's kind of yeah. like its own language, which kind of is how music is in general. Yeah. Um, so in the call and response, works so well I think because you can feel what the words are going to be and what you should be singing next. Yes. Yeah. So it's just so beautiful. And especially doing it for so long. Yeah. Because yeah. like the care time goes to the late hours of the night. Yeah. Um, I went to one at Beloved that was a twenty four hour care time oh, tonight wow. and it was <laughs> Yeah. But it's also like a meditation singing, like time, yeah. you don't notice the time, and you can stay up all night because it's just it's so energetic. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the thing. There's you know, certain lineages where they think that you should know what it means and you should know what you know, certain prayers mean and everything so you can understand who you're singing to and, mm -hmm. and have so you can build more of a devotional feeling mm -hmm. and connection to that. But I think, you know, the more how we look at it, it that's, that's eventually with the, with the name or with the chant brings you to is a state of 
no mind, mm. right? So you're not thinking about anything. The mind stops. That's that's the point. It's the union. That's yeah. the yoga of, of the purpose of it. So, um, but it's a good thing maybe to know a little bit about what you're you're chanting to and right. you understand the story or the meanings behind it. Everything. But it's not. I don't think it's really it's that. Important. Right. Yeah, I definitely want to learn more yeah. about yeah. it. Yeah. But as someone just jumping in, yeah, you can really feel it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and that's that's what you want. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the room is just filled with so much love. You really feel yeah. your heart like totally opening, and it's just so amazing to like be in that space for so long. Yeah. Yeah. So for you being a musician who's traveling and playing it and like doing kirtan all the time, like having four, four or five days of kirtan here has been like such a bliss like in the air. So how is it for you like always being in that space? Um, well, it depends. <laughs> so this is Muji growling in the back here playing with his bunny. Um, <laughs> Muji, the next question is going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, well, I mean, it depends because it is, it is also my my job. It's a very very nice job. And I really, you know, the, more of the work is the travel and you know, the, the, on planes every other day and all that kind of stuff. So it came, you know, and also as a musician playing kirtan, especially as a drummer. You know, my job is to hold it all together, right. to be like, like a providing the space. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So um, there's sound issues. There's a lot of you know physical, practical things that can get in the way. Sure. So I have to make sure all that's okay. That the band is all together. We all hear okay. Right. And, you know, how's the audience feeling? It? Are they clapping in time? Are they you know? So so there's the that job part of it. Right. Um, but then also there's uh, yeah there's there's the part where it's just when you're in it yeah and it starts to really get deep and take off yeah you disappear yeah you know, so you get lost in the you get lost yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, absolutely and you know, a lot of people ask well where's your favorite favorite place to you know to have kirtan which was your favorite city and it's like I have some favorite cities but when when you're you know, engaged in the practice. It doesn't you're, matter. You're, you're right, you know, everywhere. Yeah. You know, it doesn't really matter. Even though um, the Brazilians are really, really good at singing and keeping time. I have to Interesting. say. <laughs> <laughs> Sweden, ah. Switzerland, not so much. But <laughs> How's New York sound? <laughs> New York is good. New York is like, you know, everyone's there. So New York is, is kicking it. But. The city, that is. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's also, so, like, so I didn't notice that you had a little dog, a yeah. two-year-old little puppy, yes. sitting on your lap the entire time until someone pointed him out to me the first yeah. night. And I also really liked how Krishna does uh, <laughs> yeah. when he was introducing the band. Yeah. He introduced me to you as well. Yeah. Um, and I think how like puppies are so energetic. He's we've been hanging out up here, and he's been running and sprinting all around. Yeah. So it's really incredible that the whole time you're on stage, he just sits and like meditates out with you. Yeah, yeah. I think that speaks to the power of the music as well. Yeah, I mean, he's a special little guy. I mean, I found him in um, a rescue place in Los Angeles uh, the same week. Or a week before uh, Sidima left her body. Sidima is, uh, was a uh, saint. Um, also, I see as my guru. One of my gurus. Um, that was in India. That, that was a very, very close devotee of Neem Kro the Baba mm -hmm. Maharaj, which is, mm -hmm. you know, who Ram Dasa Krishna Das is with. But I also see as my guru. And when he left the body, or wherever he went, uh, Ma took over the ashrams um, and kind of looked over mm -hmm. his devotees and, and the ashrams. And so I spent a lot of time with her um, and felt very close to her. In LA? Uh, no, no, no. In, in India? India? In India, oh. yeah. yeah. In, in the Mountains in, in India, near 
Manital, you know, Kenshi, and she was in Rishikesh here and there. Okay. So, um, yeah, so we all spent a lot of time with her there and had tremendous experiences. I mean, that's, that's why I'm here, basically. I mean, after meeting her, mm-hmm. I was cooked. That was yeah. it, you know. So, um, so I found, he came into my life and then she left the body. So I, I always see him Aww. as like a gift from her. Oh. Yeah. And he's, I mean, you know, I got him at two months and he, right from, from the get-go, you know, I just put him in my lap, you know, when I was playing, or he wanted to be in my lap. And, and that was it. Uh, he was just there. And he just, I mean, I was like, how did you train him? I was like, I kind of didn't. He just was there, uh, you know. And he knows, he knows when he can run around and be crazy. And he knows when, okay, even at restaurants and eating, <laughs> And he's like, he just won't go after the food. He just sits there. Aww. You know, he's really, really good. Very special. Oh, Sitting on your lap right now. <laughs> really a dog, right? A Jim Henson character. Aww. Baby. Yeah. Um, I'm <laughs> planning out right now going to India mm-hmm. right after the season. Oh, okay. And it will be my first time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at a yoga school in Rishikesh. Okay. Which one? Um, Satya. I was looking at Shivananda as well. Uh, yeah. We'll have another talk yes. later about <laughs> recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so that's where, how you got into playing this kind of music? Was when you went to India? Or how no. did you meet her? Um, well, I met her, um, you know, going to India for the first time with Krishadas and, and everyone. Um, that was... Wow, 14 years ago, or something like that. Um, now, I started playing tabla when I was 22, 23. Mm-hmm. And um, I played for my first kirtan here at the, oh, wow. the Thursday night things. When I think his name was Alan. Oh, yeah, He's yeah. used to do it, yeah. Um, so, so I played, I played, that was the first time. And then I met, you know, Krishnas and, and everyone up here. And, here? And here, that's where I met him. Yeah. Wow. And, um, yeah, so, yeah. But I was a drummer since I was nine. And a rock drummer. Uh-huh. And, and everything, you know. But um, I got into the, the whole Indian thing when I was 18, mm-hmm. something like that, you know, 19. Um, and how, how was that? Like, I, no, I started listening to Indian music in college. A friend showed me Ravi Shankar, the yeah, like, yeah. video at Monterey Pop. Yeah. And the video, it was like all these hippies first time hearing this kind of music. And the video starts out showing like a pair of shoes and like everyone's starting to wake up in the fields at the festival and he's playing on stage and it starts out like slow and beautiful sitar and then people are starting to wake up and then once they really start going and playing the tablas and the sitar, they're going over the crowd and you see Jimi Hendrix in the crowd at one point and everyone in the crowd is like mesmerized by the music. Now, no one's talking to each other, everyone's totally just like hearing the sound and all like flocking towards it and totally mesmerized. Um, so that's how I started listening to Indian music for the first time. But how did you? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was um, this band called Oregon, which was a jazz band from the 70s. And this guy, Colin Walcott, played Tabla and Sitar, who's an uh, American guy. Um, so that was the first time I heard it. And also on a Ryan Cooter record, you had a Tabla player. But um, same thing, Ravi Shankar. Mm-hmm. And also Call of the Valley is a really great record. That's what Shiv Kumar Sharma playing Suntour, which is like the hammer dulcimer. Okay. Um, this Indian slide guitarist and also a double player. And, and Hari Prasad uh, playing flute. Wow. Absolutely beautiful record. Like that. Yeah, it's like a mixture of folk music and classical. Oh, wow. It's really, really something. And then I heard Zaki Hussain, who's like yeah. the... Yeah alien master of like no one can do what he does so after hearing him i was like i have to play this i have to try and you already played drums anyway yeah i was studying some african music and, and different stuff but yeah 
I wanted to learn this. And, and then, you know, I played for about three years on my own. And then uh, Zakir came, came here to teach a retreat. So I got into the retreat. Oh, wow. And that's where I first learned traditional, traditionally. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And then you bought a tapa? But I had tapa already, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, a friend of mine came back from India and just gave me a tapa set. Mm. Yeah. You had bought them there? Yeah. yeah. Is it cheaper to buy them out there? Like, when I go to India, one of my things, I, my intentions for out there is I want to learn how to play harmonium. Oh, yeah. 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 It's yeah. So beautiful. Yeah. It's definitely cheaper. Yeah. 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 Seems like the place to go learn it, also. Yeah, you just have to make sure you get the, the good stuff. Yeah. Because there's a lot of not good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so That'll be another talk, talk also. <laughs> <laughs> when you give me my tips for going yeah. to India. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, okay, and also you've shared the stage with a lot of incredible musicians I've yeah. heard about. Like, um, Sting and Mark Egan, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and you recorded and performed with the artists like Jason Mraz and Trevor Hall and Michael Franti. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I've seen Trevor Hall and Michael Franti both yeah, a bunch yeah. of times. Yeah, Michael Franti, I played with that. The opening for Jiva Mukti, um, the new, when they moved to the new so, location in, in Manhattan. Ah. Yeah, and their, their place in the city. Um, yeah. So I played with him there, and I played with him here. Do you know what he's here right now? Are there, yeah, are there, no, yeah, yeah, The workshops yeah, 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 that yeah. came yesterday. <laughs> yeah. It's always right after chant. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, some of those names, you know, it was just, I was on stage once with them or something like that. Yeah. And, uh, Jason Morales, I hung out with a few times and did some recording, which was an amazing experience. It was quite something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, so you were talking about when you started playing drums. Did you also play in a punk band and start touring when you were fourteen? Yeah, I read on your website. Absolutely. <laughs> so you were fourteen, yeah. going on tour. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. So I got into this band when I, yeah, I was fourteen, you know, just turned fourteen or something like that. Which later I'll share with you the video. Because I found a video of one of, of our practices. Oh wow! Oh my god! I definitely want very to see that. embarrassing. <laughs> very embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, I pretty much dressed the same. My was hair was hair a little different now. Nah, it was the mullet time, man. It was mullet. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was like 1990 something. I don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. No, they were all older. They're already out of high school. In the band? Yeah, so, you know, so they picked me up and whenever, you know, spring, vacation, Christmas vacation, we'd go on little tours, and then the summer I'd be gone, touring. Wow. In a van across the country. Wow. Yeah, I did that pretty much all through high school and and out of high school. That's amazing. That's so young. Yes. That's really young. Yes. What did your what your parents are cool with that? Um, my dad didn't know. My parents were were divorced. Oh, okay. Um, so my dad didn't know. My mom was just totally cool with it, but she knew the guys in the band. Okay. And she trusted them. Yeah. yeah. You know, my dad he just didn't understand. You know, yeah. But, which is understandable. Right. But, yeah, yeah. But it was fun. I saw a lot, and that was the time <laughs> when like you would go on tour with a map. Oh uh, yeah. And a prayer. <laughs> Like, okay, you'd have to, you know, pull over on the side of the road and, like, put a quarter in a thing, you know, the pay phone and call and be like, all right, man, this is where we're at. Like, where are we going? Okay, you go down there, you know, and you get directions that way. Ah, no uh, map quest there, no uh, we, we had Google, no, no gun. Towards the end, we had map quest, but in the beginning, no uh, GPS there. on no your GPS, phone. No GPS. Yeah, that's right. Didn't have a phone, yeah, yeah. It's You're very 14. different. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no cell phones, no nothing. Yeah. That's a fun evolution of music for you, going from punk to now. Yeah. Time. Well, I mean, it's, it's funny because actually a lot of, um, like, Hare Krishna's, like, an ISKCON scene and everything, they're ex punk rappers. Oh, cool. Yeah. I mean, there's something about punk music that just, it, it is very devotional. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. right? I mean, a lot of punk music is about recognizing that something is wrong mm -hmm. in society. Right. They're a little pissed about it, right? right. And they do it, you know, and they kind of go about it the wrong way, but it's, it's, it's young music, right? Um, and then that kind of, you know, if you stay on that path, then you start to ask the questions. Right. Well, why is everything wrong? Mm -hmm. What could I do to help them? And then that leads into a spiritual practice. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, you know, that... And I still, I still listen to a lot of that stuff. My favorite band is Iron Maiden. Oh, you know, cool. Metal band. Cool. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's... And I still play with that energy. Mm. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Totally. Oh, I hit it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I like going to punk shows also. Yeah. I feel like my range of music of things I'm interested in is pretty wide. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah, it's good. It's all, it's all music. Yeah. Do you play in any other types of music now, or is it a lot of world music now? It's, it's mostly world music. Um, yeah. Experimental stuff, like, you know, the stuff that I'm doing with Mark Egan. We did a, uh, yeah. a record together called Dream and Spirits with uh, Mark, with, uh, with Shane. I mean, um, who also plays with Hollow Notes and Daryl Hall and everything. He's wow. an amazing, amazing guitarist. And Mark has done, I mean, he's played with everyone. You know, his, his list of records he's, or, he's on is just amazing. Um, That's the album you just put out in this past year? Um, there's another one called Dream and Spirits we did together in 2017. Okay. Um, and then the one I just put out in June, that's, that's kind of my own stuff. But they have a big part of what happened on the record. You know, absolutely, oh. yeah. But it's, it's very experimental. It's world, kind of jazzy. Yeah. But definitely something different, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, how I play these instruments, I mean, I studied a bit traditionally of everything, but I'm also coming from a rock background, punk rock mm -hmm. background. And also jazz, and I love to improvise. So I love to just pick up a drum. And, okay, what's whatever flows what's through that? exactly? Yeah. And what's this moment saying? You know. Um, so it's I don't really know exactly what to call it. Yeah. And how they it's play. Yeah, and how they play. You know, to what I, what I offer them. So like, okay, here's yeah. the rhythm. What would you you know? So it's like creating something new in a way. So when you're, like, for the album and when you're improvising, are the songs on the album all improvised? Or, like, do you plan them out? Or do you just start recording and see what happens? Yeah, well, a lot of the stuff on the new record, um, the Other World record, is um, I kind of just, okay, let's press record and I'm just going to start playing. Cool. And then I'd get into a groove for however long and then I'd say, okay, what would sound good with this and I pick up that and go in so it's almost like improvising layering with myself on. just okay. layering different rhythms and then once I got that together I'd send it to Mark oh, and then send it to Shane oh, cool. and then, yeah the Dreaming Spirits record we did a lot of it improvising together cool. um, yeah just playing for an hour or so and just cool yeah, yeah. so when you did that like multiple would you do multiple songs at once? Like, would it be like a one hangout and you're just like yeah. jamming and then that just float, you're in a flow and it just goes to the next? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of, there's a few pieces that were just from one long jam that we just say, okay, that's a piece, that's a piece that we just, you know, we just kept on going. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, also I started playing drum set again. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, um, last, year I got to uh, have a little jam with um, Adrian uh, Smith, the, the guitarist from Iron Maiden. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that was quite an amazing <gasps> experience for me. Um, so that, and he really enjoyed it. it was, you know, Sweet. Yeah, so, you know, hopefully that will continue and, and have more stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I really miss playing Kip, you because know, I got my legs. Not sitting You're not like sitting it. on the floor. Yeah. It feels very good. Yeah. yeah. Do you have to do, do you have any, like, yoga poses you do and stuff? Like, when you're sitting on the floor, 
do you, because you do, for the Taba, do you have to stay cross-legged or can you kind of like adjust your legs? I think like, I in do different ways? pretty much whatever you want, but I mean, it's, it's like easier just yeah. to stay, stay like this. Stay yeah. Back, yeah. Um, I've done a lot of different things to try to make it easy. Stay loose. <laughs> you know, right now I'm doing a, a practice that really helps. It's called Each One Standing. So mm-hmm. it's just a standing meditation, Qigong, you know, Taoist Qigong, okay. Tai Chi when you. So it's just literally standing postures, which is really annoying. <laughs> it could really be hard on the body, but once your body opens and it's in proper alignment, mm-hmm. it's amazing. Wow. Yeah, it really cleans all the meridians and channels. And yeah. it's, it's really something. So you do that before or after? Um, I try or? to do it every day, every morning. Oh, okay. It's part of your morning practice. Yeah. Oh. Do you find that, like, touring and being, moving from place to place, you're always somewhere different, different towns, different countries, has having a morning practice kind of helped ground you? Yeah. Or, like, has that yeah. been a big part of touring for you? Yeah, yeah. You really, I mean, it's, it's so important to have a practice like that. I mean, it's, it's really hard to maintain it because yeah. sometimes you have to, you know, the flights you have to catch really early you know, the rooms are strange and, you know, yeah. but, it's, you know, if, if you can get that done, then at least you have that grounding, you yeah. have that space that you opened up inside. And, you mean, touring or not touring, right. morning practice is very important because that's how, that's the energy you're opening up when you first wake up. And that's, you know, you're bringing yourself, sitting back into the awareness of stillness and spaciousness um, so then you have that perception throughout your day yeah you know, or try to yeah or try to, you know. what else do you mind sharing what your practice is you started telling me about it earlier oh yeah um, how long does it take you depends it depends you know what I have time to do and but a lot of different practices have come in. And, you know, yeah, yeah, it evolves. Yeah, so, um, of course, you know, the, the, my rock is the Hanuman Chalisa. And, and mm-hmm. you know, ch- uh, Jop, different, uh, you know, mantra recitation. Mm-hmm. Um, silent. So that's my main devotional kind of practice. But then, you know, there's just the Qigong. There's a lot of Tibetan Buddhist practices. Dzogchen practice is a really beautiful practice. That's Dzogchen? Dzogchen, that's What's called. That like? Dzogchen is a, a certain kind of open eye meditation. Okay. Um, I can't really exp- go into too much detail about it, but it's just a type of um, practice of just letting go, sitting, and gazing, but also kind of like this looking back in a way. So basically it's just, a good way to describe it is so if you're meditating and you have an experience of spaciousness, mm-hmm. right, um, that's still an experience of spaciousness. Mm-hmm. Your mind is saying, ah, I'm, I am feeling spacious. So the awareness is experiencing spaciousness. But what if the awareness became aware of itself? Mm-hmm. So it's like the mind looking back at the mind. It, it's, mm-hmm. it's, 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 yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, so it's um, so it's kind of like that. And it's it's best to do with the eyes open. You know, there's um, you know, Tibetan Buddhism. There's um, what do you call it? Uh, Vipassana and then uh, Shamatha, yeah. Shamatha meditation with form or without form. You know, is looking out and just just seeing the space in the room. That's mm-hmm. what you focus on, mm-hmm. and not any form. Right. You know, so that's kind of leading into um, a Zogchen kind of state. But then once you you have the space, and then you kind of look back into the awareness that is experiencing this. Mm. Kind of. Not really. But in words, that's as close as I can get it. Yeah. Yeah. Well. yeah. Does, um, would you have a uh, morning practice? Or what does he do yes. while you're doing that? <laughs> well, let me tell you. <clears throat> Moody's, 
Georgie's more, first morning practice is to lick my face. Uh -huh. And be like, come on, get up. Throw the reindeer, play bunny. <laughs> feed me, whatever. And when I'm doing my practice, his practice is to sit with the bunny or the reindeer and just pout. Oh, like that you're not throwing the bunny. <laughs> I'm not throwing. He's just pouting. He kind of looks at me through his eyebrows. Just like, <laughs> like that. So, you know, within my practice, I'll play with him and sort of the thing. Uh, and once he's chasing it, then I'll do something. <laughs> yeah. So he's practicing patience while yeah. you're practicing. Yeah. <laughs> he's very spoiled. Oh, uh, I was... I've been trying to like get a stronger morning practice mm -hmm. going. Um, I usually start with journaling and all the different kundalini mantras yeah. that are based on what I'm looking for is what I'll incorporate. But so I started doing um, breath of fire mm -hmm. and I tried making that my morning practice. And so my cat Sage wasn't even in the room when I started doing that. And you know you have your eyes closed and rolled up to your third eye. And, your thumbs out and you yeah, start yeah. breathing in and out. Yeah. yeah. So I'm in it and I, I don't know, I must not have been doing it so long. And all of a sudden I just feel teeth dig into my arms. She oh came running God. in and was wow. like freaked out. <laughs> I was like, what is she doing? <laughs> and so she it's was funny. not so into that. So <laughs> I have to do that, that part of the practice when she's not. Yeah. <laughs> she was really weirded out by that. <laughs> And then having your eyes closed, it kind of broke my trance. So. Yeah, yeah, I imagine. Jeez. But she, she does like meditating. Um, so I named her Sage because she's gray and has these white stripes on her belly oh, that look like when you burn sage, the smoke yeah, coming out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so that's nice. her. When I um, rescued her, her name was, her litter was all named after that 70s show characters, but with oh. cat puns. So oh she was Lori Furman instead of Lori Foreman. <laughs> so I, I was like, I don't really feel like she's a Lori. Yeah. I feel like the people who rescued her yeah. in the shelter were kind of just like thinking of creative names yeah, yeah, for yeah, yeah. in the shelter. And she was only three months old, so she was, seemed like she would take on a new name pretty well. So I sat with her in the car ride home and felt into what her name would be and she like rolled over on her back and showed me her belly and it looked like the sage smoke so I realized her name and I asked her if she thought that resonated yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah. I, I got the feeling that that was a yeah, yeah. Uh, but so whenever I get ready to start meditating and start burning sage or palo santo and go to lay down there will be times where my eyes are closed and she'll I'll just feel her furry body come and like lay against next to me nice. and she'll just lay and be totally still with me oh, that's great. um and if she smells it burning she'll come running and yeah, like yeah, she, yeah. she really likes to meditate also which is cute um but animals are so um aware of energy yeah. um I am studying Reiki right now oh, I'm, I'm level two right now and I'm starting master training next week but um I recently went to go see my aunt, and she has um, two great Bernese giant mountain dogs. And one of them um, got sick of cancer this year, and they had to amputate one of his legs. And he was okay for a little while, and then they just found out he had, that the cancer came back. Mm. So I went over there to see him, and um, so learning Reiki we have talked about that you can give Reiki yeah. to animals if yeah. they're okay with, if they like start to get weirded out, like obviously stop yeah. like with them. But so I wanted to, I was feeling like I wanted to put some energy in and send him some like healing. So I sat down with him. He's this big, happy puppy. He was like panting, like licking my face, like all excited. And then I like asked him, I was like, okay, I feel like, would you like some Reiki right now? And I'm like petting him. And then the first part you do when you give, Reiki is you clear um, the aura like with like a brushing motion like over them three times, and as soon as I started doing that, he went from like panting and like super excited, hyper excited, like licking and like laid his head down, and he started deep breathing with me mm -hmm. also, and I went through all the poses on him and like 
spent a really long time working energy like where the cancer was yeah. and he let me do the full treatment to oh, him it was like amazing. so calm and so it's really amazing how they can sense and be into it also yeah absolutely on that. yeah yeah that's sweet that you did that yeah maybe i'll give muji some regular yeah. <laughs> I try to I try to sage him sometimes. He doesn't like it. The smoke. Yeah, he's just like. <laughs> freaks out. Aww. But you need it, bro. You need it. You need to sage. So where are you, you guys are headed to Boxy Fest next after here? Um yeah, after Northampton, we go to Boxy Fest. Boxy Fest. I haven't gone to that one, but. The- Joshua Tree is definitely somewhere on my radar that I'm feeling very called to go to. Yeah. And that festival came up and I was looking at it. And they do it three different times? Um, twice. Like, twice in the summer? Yeah. No, no, yeah. Well, once in um, spring? Yeah. Okay. And then one, and then in September. Or yeah. fall, I guess. So. I think, yeah. yeah. It's like a really beautiful one. Yeah, Joshua Tree is cool. Have you spent a lot of time? Yeah, it's very. Yeah, it's great. It's just like the aliens are close by. That's what it feels like. Definitely a lot of that kind of energy. Is there a Kirtan song that they like and they come down for the yeah, aliens? Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, it's. Oof. That's some interesting things there. Yeah. I've had that feeling in um, Sedona. In Arizona. Oh, yeah. You've been there too? Yes. Yeah, that's a special yes. special place. Yeah, that's so. uh, yeah, that's another thing. Have you guys played over there? Yeah. Yeah. No, but did I play on Kitty? No, I played there with something else. Another group. Uh, yeah. 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 Are you going with Krishna Das? Are you how long is the tour going on for? Um uh, well this the tour kind of ended, like the main tour tour in Europe, that's, that, yeah. that's done. So now, this is like a lot of little things that we do, you know. It's, it's kind of, I mean, it's a lot of travel, but yeah. it's not like a solid tour, you know. Right. So, um, you know, after Bhakti Fest, we come straight back and we have a thing in uh, Boston and also in Manhattan mm-hmm. um, with uh, Cholindroma, which is a, a Tibetan uh, nun. It's oh. an amazing singer. Wow. And also Lama Tenzin, who's a, who's a singer. Um, so it's like a, it's, it's a benefit for something, I think a Tibetan orphanage, maybe? Uh-huh. No, 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 no. It's for a benefit for Chokin Yuma, who's a, a great Lama. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so we do that. And then we have the rest of October off, oh, that's which nice. I'm going to start working on my own live set solo thing. Cool. Yeah. So you're recording new stuff for that? Or is it like you have live sets already recorded with that year? No, I'm, I basically I have um, a lot of um, some effects pedals and a loop station and everything. Mm-hmm. So basically I, I'm going to work on different pieces that I can improvise with, like different, you know, um, loop some stuff, but also just work with some of the effects and just, I don't know, put together a nice little hour and a half set long, cool. long, long set um, that I can just do on my own, you know, cool. and maybe invite some people and some friends and stuff like that. And then once I have that pretty much down, I'll record that. And that'll be another record. Nice. Yeah. Oh, this is something to look out for. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I really would like to start doing some shows on my own just yeah. so I can be very creative and yeah. just really just do whatever I want, you know, and just, it's fun to think about playing with gig where I don't really know exactly what I'm going to do. It's just, and on stage, it's, it just, just, just comes out. You just do it. Do you have any, like, rituals or, like, anything you do to get into, like, the creative space for when you start doing something like that? Um... Well, pretty much I just, you know, I just kind of remember my teachers, my gurus, um, all the different lineages or 
the beings that I'm connected to that I feel like they help me. Yeah, I just kind of call on them. Yeah. That's pretty much it. And you know, especially with improvisation, I'm just paying attention to silence, listening to the silence and, and the space is it's very important. Good. Yeah, so then that's where it comes from. That's something to look forward to. Yeah. Today. And I also have this other, this whole other thing I'm working on, which is, um, I don't know even what to call it. It's on Ableton software, Ableton, you know, on the recording software okay. on the computer, and it's all done through MIDI keyboard. So I guess it's kind cool. of like electronic music, but um, I have like two albums worth of music. Wow. That is completely something else. Cool. It's like ambient, very experimental. I don't even know. So cool. that's something else that I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. Most Kirtan people will be like, what is this? It's okay to have like... What drug did he take? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so fun. Do you, have you listened to like Emancipator and like as I do like this like, cool sound scoopy. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll cool. check it out. Cool. Mm -hmm. that sounds really good. So what is the jam you brought with you up here? Um, it is a frame drum, uh Bendir. Yeah. Do Middle Eastern. You know, this could be played in a few different ways. Um, you could do it with like uh, snaps. Stuff like that. But I kind of been like, there's a, um, a track space that's on the new record. And I kind of just started playing around with different ways of, you know, so there's this kind of scratching thing. And I started doing it my nails in a way. So it's like.
it's like for an hour just wow. <laughs> Yeah, because all music, I mean, I don't know, I, I think all music can be a prayer. Yeah. I mean, it can be devotional. It's, it's all God doing it anyway, right? Mm-hmm. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Where does it come it, from? Yeah, exactly. Even if it's death metal. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, there's tornadoes, there's storms, there's earthquakes. Yeah. It's all part of nature. Yeah. I think uh, it's all in nature. That's all music is the same. You can have bad intentions, even singing kirtan. I mean, you can have the intention of being a rock star and make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Sing the name of God. And that could be looked at as, well, it's bad intention. You're not really doing the practice correctly. Right, for what it is. But the large, greater intention of who's really running this, it's a play, right? A divine play. So it's that person is exactly doing what they exactly should be doing because that's, what, that's how it's written. So. It's really beautiful. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, while you were playing, uh, Muji brought the bunny over for me to throw the bunny over the necklace, the like coin necklace. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 Have you ever yeah. thought of putting like some yeah. kind of like bells on him? Yeah, to, does he dance? <laughs> In his way, his own way. His own little way. Yeah, I definitely want to do that thing with his feet. Yeah. That'd be great. A Muji album of. Just, just like some of the noise you get. Like, you know? <laughs> 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 There's a Muji solo. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll ask you yeah. now the question okay. that I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm trying to work out um, a question to ask everyone at the end. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the glitter and the sage, the glitter being like uh, live music and going dancing, mm-hmm. and then the sage being like energy work and uh-huh. yoga and meditation, which they kind of are the same thing, but these are just two different. Yeah, yeah. representations of them those are the things that I guess you could think of as like ingredients for what makes me feel like the highest level of vibration mm-hmm. and what mm-hmm. fires me up um, what would be your glitter and sage yeah I guess sage also being my cat is one of them so if Muji is one of those that's that works <laughs> yeah well my glitter would be um, well, just I guess going to like see like Iron Maiden concerts or something like that, mm-hmm. you know? Because first of all, I don't dance. You don't dance. I don't dance. You don't dance. It's very well. It's not too odd. But I know a lot of musicians that don't, but it's like my body moves when I have a drum. Uh-huh. That's that's when that's how I dance. Mm-hmm. Without it, I feel very strange. Oh. Like it, like it's, that's not how the energy comes in. Oh. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, you know, going to a concert like that, for me, is very spiritual. Mm-hmm. It's very devotional, you know? 
I mean, because like you're saying, it's all the same, right? So it's like these these musicians are are very passionate about what they're doing. You're completely in the moment when they're, yeah. when they're playing, even though it's crazy metal music or whatever. It's hard to play, and all the whole audience is there as one. It's like one living thing, mm-hmm. organism. That's just it's beautiful. It's a beautiful experience. Right. It's a very spiritual experience for me. Anyway. Especially when it's like a band like that where yeah. everyone knows all the words yeah. and it's a whole, you're in the middle of a whole crowd of people yeah. all singing together. It's yeah. like instead of call and response when they're all singing the lyrics together. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's really, really Magic. something. Um, um, yeah, and Sage is... Yeah. A lot of it is being alone, you know, spending a lot of time alone, and just sitting in that space, um, remembering, you know, Ma Siddha Ma, Ma um, Whatever practice brings me into that stillness, watching my breath, listening to the song, whatever, you know, mm-hmm. there's so much stuff that you can do. But just uh, being amazed, also just being alive, just feeling your body, feeling the presence of your own body, just the presence of that, the, the awareness of that. It's just it's such an amazing thing that I think we just take for granted every day. And it's just running after this, running after right. that, or even running after spiritual experiences. Mm-hmm. The next practice. The next book. It's just like, it's right here. Right. <laughs> Everything's inside. It's right yeah. here. It's yeah. always right here. You have everything you need. Yeah. I know. There's some Eckhart Tolle said that always really st- stuck with me that what we hear as silence and what we see as spaciousness and space is the body of God itself. Mm-hmm. So if you're in it, it's always there. And it's just to kind of settle and look back and surrender to right now, and then and you're in it. Mm-hmm. And the whole, like, you know, it's like, imagine if a fish asks, where's the water? Right. I don't understand this water. You know, he, he tells the, the, the thing in his book. And that's, what, that's how we are. Mm-hmm. Where is this enlightened consciousness? Where is this God? It's everywhere. I mean... It's easy to say, very yeah. hard to, to do. But, you know, I think, yeah, when I can get into that space of just at least remembering that and for some time just sitting with that. Mm-hmm. And also then, you know, exactly Muji, you know, you know and, and whoever is just um, having that gratitude and that feeling of love for that, you know, other beings that are sharing us mm-hmm. um, and compassion for all the suffering that's out there. Right. There's a lot of it. Right. When um, we're learning, like when we're starting and finishing a Reiki session, um, one teacher t- taught me that what he does is he thanks the person who discovered this energy, the person who taught it to him, mm-hmm. the person who's allowing you to move it to them and yourself for being present in that as well. Yeah. 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 Gratitude is bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll let Muji get to bed. Yes. Um, it's been really nice chatting with you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, really yeah, amazing yeah, weekend yeah. of music and puppies, sweet puppies. <laughs> and, um, Definitely be looking out for your next yeah, project. Yeah, that sounds like a good I'm one. going to be doing a few. My friend Craig uh, Santiago, the great the drummer I was telling you about today. We're going to do do some stuff, and Mark Egan, I'll be doing some other stuff here. Yeah, cool. I'll do a bunch of stuff. Cool. All right, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Good night, Mark. Thank you for tuning in to the Glitter and Sage podcast. 
the intro music is from the song Drishti by my beautiful friends Cosmal. That's C O S M A L. Be sure to check out their amazing music, art, and mindfulness videos. And also, big love to my creative partner, David Atwood, who does all my sound engineering and video editing. Thank you, David. You can check out his music under his DJ name, Mr. Atwood, A T W O O D. And you can follow me on Instagram at glitter.and.sage. And if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure you rate, review, and share this podcast. I hope your day is filled with so much magic. See you next week.